The Jets were close to trading for Tyree Kill. He ends up in Miami. They don't have their starting quarterback this week, but will the Jets be able to lock down the Cheetah? J-E-T-S! Jets! 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 The Jets were the other team that was kind of vying to trade for you. How close was that to happening this past offseason? You know what? It was very close to happening, man. But it's just those, it's just those state taxes, man. You know, I, I realized, you know, I... I had to make a grown-up decision, and you know, here I am in, in the great city of Miami. You know, great weather, great people, what well, beautiful people. I feel like so. Here I am. Welcome to Jets Talk. My name is Ryan. I'll be your pilot. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Boys and girls, there are a lot of storylines going on around the New York Jets, the Miami Dolphins this week. The Jets could find themselves with a little bit of luck. In first place in the AFC East, this would be something fantastic, especially since the Miami Dolphins are going to be without their star quarterback, Tua Tungavailoa. He had that horrible, horrible head injury last Sunday uh, and then had the Thursday night game, or I guess it was two Sundays ago, played in the Thursday night game just four days later, got his bell rung again. He's out this week. Hopefully he gets better. Um, but the Jets have a game to play, and there's more storylines beyond that as well, and the Dolphins star wide receiver Tyree Kill very nearly became a New York Jets New York Jets wide receiver this past offseason. So I want to dive into a little bit of that, some of the comments that he's made recently. Now you just heard uh, Tyree Kill say the the New Jersey state sales tax uh, or, or income tax or whatever is the reason why he wound up in Miami as opposed to New York. Uh, and that, that's definitely true to some sort of an extent, but it's not everything of the puzzle because this is what he said just after he was traded. I mean, how, clo how close were you to, to pick up the Jets? Yeah. How close was I? Who? The Jets? I know, nah, man. Look, man, it's, it's a lot. Of, I, I'm, I don't even want to get into all that. I knew I was going to pick Miami no matter what, man. So based on that initial response, it didn't seem like the Jets were ever going to be an option for Tyree Kill. He's from Miami. I think he obviously wanted to play there. I do think the, the the income tax probably did come in. Now, because of the contract he signed, he wound up signing a four-year, $120 million contract with Miami. $3 million a year is what he would have lost if he had signed with the New York Jets as opposed to the Miami Dolphins. And that's because you get taxed on your income. Obviously, in Miami and Florida does not have a state income tax. Uh, so his eight home games each year is what he would be saving on that contract because you get taxed based on where you're playing. So he still plays one game, or I guess one game in New Jersey, one game in New York, Jets, Bills. So he gets taxed New Jersey state income tax and New York income tax in those uh, away games. But it's the home games is where he's going to save that money. So this is something that's always kind of bothered Jet fans and Giant fans and you know teams in, in high income tax uh, states because they ultimately have a disadvantage because of their state regulations compared to teams in, say, Texas or in Arizona or in Florida. Um, we saw Darrell Rivas wanting to, to sign with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers a long time ago for similar sort of reasons. Now, obviously, that was a trade, so there's a little bit more involved with that one, but it's something that that is kind of an issue in terms of, uh, you know, competitive grounds <laughs> like when like in essence the dolphins and these teams these non uh, income tax states have a higher salary cap because they can offer more in a weird roundabout uh sort of way so i'm not sure how i i love that but either way i get it you know whatever he winds up in miami the dolphins ended up giving up a first a second uh a fourth last year 20, 2022 draft and a fifth and a sixth round pick in 2023. Now, if you wind up with Tyreek Hill, you're going to be feeling pretty uh, pleased with yourself. Now, he winds up being the third ranked wide receiver in terms of pro football focus grade. He has an 85.2 receiving grade on the season through four games. Now, he's had games of eight catches, 94 yards, 11 catches, 190 yards, two touchdowns, two catches, 33 yards. That was against the Bills, but it was against the Bills' backups so maybe there's a situation where uh, we could maybe duplicate something like that. Uh, and then this past week, 10 receptions, 160 yards. This guy is incredibly, incredibly talented. Uh, and when you think about, here's his stats for the year, uh, four games, 
477 yards, 31 receptions, two touchdowns. That's averaging like 120 yards a game. This dude is going to be a problem. And even though they don't have Tua, they're going to have familiar quarterback to the New York Jets, Teddy Bridgewater at the helm. And this is what Tyree Kill had to say when talking about his production with a backup quarterback. You said that like QB doesn't necessarily matter to your production. I think you said you put up numbers with Alex Smith. You put up numbers with... I put up numbers with you. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) Now, clearly this dude is motivated. Clearly he thinks very highly of himself, whether it's Alex Smith, that reporter, or Teddy Bridgewater throwing him the ball. He feels confident enough that he is going to be able to make a guy miss and and generate yardage uh, with the separation that he creates and the speed that he has. Now, the Jets in this whole realm of, you know, what could have happened if we wound up with Tyreek Hill? Well, the Jets offered two second round picks. They would have given up, obviously, pick 35 and pick 38. So in essence, you're talking about the Jets giving up Jermaine Johnson and Brees Hall. Now, maybe you consider doing that, But at the same time, if you wind up making that trade, you likely don't take Garrett Wilson at number 10. You wind up probably taking Jermaine Johnson because there were reports that the Jets were obviously, or not obviously, but the Jets were contemplating taking him at the number four pick. So if you say you have Sauce Gardner, Jermaine Johnson, and Tyreek Hill instead of Garrett Wilson and uh, Brees Hall, maybe you consider doing that. But the way the chips kind of fell, I don't particularly like Tyreek Hill, the person anyway. I'd like to believe that the Jets would bring in players that, you know, are relatively good people and, and aren't Tyreek Hill. <laughs> um, you know, I have my, my own issues with him. Uh, but I like what we got in Garrett Wilson. Not to mention Garrett Wilson's full contract for four years, not including his fifth year option. His four years are going to be cheaper than one year of Tyreek Hill on his new contract. Not to mention you get Brees Hall in addition to it. So I really like who Garrett Wilson is, who Brees Hall is, and I think the Jets are in a really, really good situation right now. Uh, So I wouldn't trade that in any capacity. But we do have a game against Tyreek Hill, and he's going to be a problem. We have a new look secondary. This is completely revamped from where the Jets were just one year ago. You have LaMarcus Joyner and Whitehead back there playing safety. Now those are going to be very critical players in how we contain this Miami Dolphins offense. Because I have a lot of faith in DJ Reed, in Sauce Gardner. And I'm fascinated to see how we deploy these corners against this team. In my mind, I would love to see Sauce Gardner body up Tyreek Hill, but with the speed and the height difference, maybe Sauce ends up on Jalen Waddle. And then you put DJ Reed with some safety help with Tyreek Hill. Because I think that might be the more attractive matchup. You start to kind of shade coverages toward towards uh, some some guys that can blow the top off of, uh, of a defense. And then you look at the rest of this team. They still have Gazicki. They still have Mostert. They still have, like, this is a really good team with or without Tua at the helm. Now, the best way to neutralize great wide receiver options and tight end options and running back options is hitting the quarterback. And last week, we got to see a little bit of that, you know, three sack action and and hopefully a little bit more pressure with Teddy Bridgewater coming to town because if you can get to the quarterback, he can't get the ball to his playmakers. That is going to be the key of this game. How much pressure can the Jets generate on Teddy Bridgewater? Is he going to have enough time to kill us with the deep ball? And when he does have to get the ball out quick to his weapons, can the Jets make tackles in space? Can they contain Tyreek Hill? If you can have a stat line similar to what the Buffalo Bills put up with their backup defense, two receptions, 33 yards on four targets, that is a winning formula for the New York Jets. And I think we really do have a good shot here. I think we can lock down the cheetah, put him back in the zoo, is what I've been saying. Put the cheetah back in the zoo. No reason to see him running wild on us. Guys, I want to hear your thoughts. Can the New York Jets lock up Tyree Kill? Did you want Tyree Kill? Do you like how the trade worked out or didn't work out for why the why the Jets? No, why how the Jets wound up with the players they wound up with and how Miami wound up with Tyree Kill. Do you like that trade? Do you not like that trade? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, go Jets.